In this video, we're going to show you three easy ways to check if your car has an exhaust restriction. Let's get to it. An exhaust restriction can have several causes, like a clogged catalytic converter that needs to be replaced, or even a mouse that has stuffed your exhaust with nesting material. The most common symptoms of an exhaust restriction are a lack of power, poor fuel economy, and failing to accelerate past a certain speed or RPM. But luckily, it's super easy to test for exhaust restrictions. You can do so by measuring pressure, vacuum, or checking the exhaust temperature. To measure both the pressure and the vacuum, you only need this one handy gauge which we'll link to in the description under the video. You can use it to measure loads of stuff and it comes with lots of adapters and even a rubber cone to press into a hole so you're sure it will fit. But to measure the pressure, we need to use the O2 sensor hole that's located somewhere on the exhaust between the engine and the catalytic converter. Ours, unfortunately, is difficult to reach, hidden all the way under there and only accessible from the bottom. But usually, it's a lot easier to get to. And remember, if you have a V-shaped engine layout, you need to test both exhausts for restrictions. To connect the gauge to the O2 sensor hole, we only need these two adapters. The big one goes in the hole itself, and the small one connects the big adapter to the rubber hose. And then you can connect it to the gauge itself to get the pressure reading. Now first grab a wrench and loosen the O2 sensor. Then remove it completely and hang it somewhere to the side. Grab the adapters and screw them in the hole. Connect one end of the rubber tube to the adapter and finally connect the other end to the gauge itself. After making sure everything is clear of the moving serpentine belt and pulleys, start the engine. Ideally, there should be no or almost no back pressure. In general, it should be below 1.5 PSI at idle and below 3 PSI at 2500 RPM. Anything above usually indicates a restriction in your exhaust. So in our case, we clearly have no restriction. Measuring the vacuum is as easy as measuring the pressure. You only need to locate the intake manifold vacuum line. To locate the intake manifold, follow the air intake and it will lead you straight to it. The air intake leads air directly to the intake manifold, which in turn is connected to the engine. Somewhere on the intake manifold you'll find a rubber vacuum line, which sometimes after an additional connection like in our case, leads to this large soup can shaped cylinder which is the vacuum reservoir. However, the setup will look different depending on the make and model of your car. Carefully disconnect it and attach the gauge to that line. In this case, we need one of these adapters to connect to the vacuum line. Just push it in and attach the rubber line going to the gauge. And once again, make sure nothing is in the way of the moving belt and pulleys. For this test, you also need to look at idle. But more importantly, also look at what happens when you rev the engine shortly, which we'll do by hand on the throttle body like so. Now start your engine and look at the gauge. The vacuum should stay in the green at idle ranging from 17 to 22 inches of mercury, which it does. So the first part of the test is already normal. The second part of the vacuum test is to shortly rev the engine. When you do, you should see it drop down all the way to zero. If your car does not have between 17 and 22 inches of mercury, and it doesn't drop to zero when revving, there's something wrong and your exhaust might be restricted. To detect an exhaust obstruction through temperature, you need a thermal camera. We've got this super small thermal camera that plugs in your phone and is easy to work with. We'll link to it in the description below so you can easily find it. First, drive your car for about 15 minutes so it reaches operating temperature. Idling your car does not warm up your catalytic converter enough for it to start working properly. And because we had to first remove the skid plate again after the test drive so we can see the catalytic converter, it has unfortunately cooled down a bit. With your car warmed up, compare the area before and after the catalytic converter. If the inlet has the same temperature as the outlet, the catalytic converter doesn't work properly or isn't at operating temperature yet because the chemical reaction in a catalytic converter causes a temperature increase. In our case, the outlet is still a good 100 degrees warmer, even after cooling down a bit, which is normal. But if the inlet is hotter than the outlet, there's probably an obstruction. Another common place for an obstruction is in the muffler or at the couplers. If the temperature before them is higher than after, there might be an obstruction. It's that easy. Now you know how to check for exhaust restrictions. And if there is an obstruction somewhere in your exhaust system, it's best to replace that part. But we'll show you how to replace your entire exhaust system, muffler or catalytic converter in separate videos. So make sure to check them out. Thanks for watching. More videos are on the way. So be sure to like, comment, and share this video. It really helps us out a lot. 
Our content wouldn't be possible without the amazing support of our patrons and YouTube channel members whose crew you can join via the links in the description to see our schedule, vote on future videos, get behind the scenes sneak peeks, and much more. This is Classic Car Maintenance and we'll see you on the next one.